we can begin to film then. And I, I want to welcome all of those who are here and all of those who are watching by the internet. The name of my message this morning is, It's a New Day Dawning. It's a new day. I, I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost, we are on the edge of some amazing changes. There's a para paradigm shift happening right now. Now, even in the natural, you can see it happening. See, you see the realm of darkness. And, and the scripture says that as we get close to the end, he said the enemy will be filled with great wrath. Now, I, I, I am not involved in the news. I'm not watching the news. I'm not reading the news because there's enough other people doing it. I, I don't need to. But I do know there is massive persecution going on right now against Christians. I, I know there's some bizarre things happening, not just around the world, but in our nation. Bizarre, weird, strange things that are happening in our culture. Now, we as believers, we, 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 we do not allow these things to cause us to fear. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. But I, I believe it's the birthing pains of something that's about to break forth upon the pages of history that has never been seen before. I really do. I, I believe what's going to happen here is there is going to become a great divide. Now remember, he said that he shook the heavens at one time. He said, I promise you. God said, how many know that God is not a man that he should lie? nor the Son of Man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. He said, I promise you in the book of Hebrews, not only am I going to shake the heavens, but I'm going to shake the earth. Yes. He says, and everything, everything that can be shaken will be shaken, that only that which is eternal may remain. Now, if you really want to look at this scripturally, biblically, you'll discover the only thing that is impossibly shaken is faith in Jesus Christ. You know, that's why James was talking to the 12 tribes which had been scattered because of persecution. And he told them, the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, Paul really went into great detail in the book of 1 Corinthians when he talked about the fact that he had a thorn in the flesh. Now, the thorn in the flesh, by the way, was not a sickness. It was not a disease. He tells us that he was shipwrecked three times. He was beat thrice with rods. He was beat with whips. He was stoned. He was imprisoned. He was in peril in the city, in peril in the country, in peril by his own countrymen. And for in other words, persecution is breaking loose on Paul like you can't believe. And he cries out to God. He said, oh, God. And God said, said, no, no, I'm not going to release the persecution because my grace is sufficient for you. He said, in your weakness, my strength will be perfected. In your weakness, I can personally tell you that it has been at times when I was in the midst of persecution, when there was literally people that were trying to kill me, shoot me, stab me, burn me to death. Cut me up with Mercedes. I'm telling you, the grace of God rose up in me and delivered me like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, there is a great divide that is happening right now. I'm telling you, God is about to do something. Darkness is going to begin to separate from the light. And people are going to have to choose. Am I going to walk in the light or am I going to walk in the in the darkness. I'm telling you there is going to be a separation of evil from good, from right, from wrong to right. And then there's going to be a one side where there's going to be pain and sorrow and torment. On the other side, there is going to be great joy, great peace, great victory. We have got to decide what side we are on. God is about to bring this nation and the nations of the world. Now, how is he going to do this, Pastor Mike? I'm going to tell you how he's going to do it. He's going to do it suddenly. When it comes to destruction, he said, the false prophets will be saying, peace, peace, peace. But then, sudden destruction. 
like in the days of Noah, when everybody thought that Noah had lost his mind, that he's telling everybody that God wanted them to repent and turn back to the Lord and begin to serve him. They thought he lost his mind, and in the midst of this building, this humongous wooden box, they thought he really lost his mind. And then they didn't know what to do when all of a sudden animals began to come. But all of a sudden, God, God closed the door of that ark and judgment came. Now, even as there is going to be sudden and swift judgment against wickedness, because that's really what the book of Revelation is. It is a revelation of the character of God. See, there's been a lot of wrong teaching about God's character and nature. Really, God is love, but he is a God that's filled with wrath and anger and hatred against all unrighteousness. And what's going to happen here is God is going to show back up like he did in the old covenant as a God of judgment. But on the other side, the children of God are going to be like those in the land of Goshen. When all of a sudden a man showed up one day by the name of Moses because he was sent by the Holy Ghost. He was sent by the Father. He was sent by the Son. And he stood before Pharaoh and he said, Let my people go. I want you to know we are coming into the place where the voice of God is going to thunder out of heaven and he's going to say this, Let my people go. It was God's people. It was the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was the, the, see, the, the children of Joseph and, 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 and Israel that were in bondage and in slavery for 340 years. And in that time period, Egypt is becoming stronger and more mightier and more powerful because of the backs of the slaves. But one day, a man who had a stuttering problem, who had been a, a, a reject, who had been a failure, because remember, he within his own strength had tried to deliver the children of Israel, and he had utterly, completely failed. And 40 years, he disappeared into the unknown. No one knew what happened to him. He, they didn't know he had become a shepherd and got married and had a couple sons. But one day, God appeared to him in a burning, fiery bush among Sinai, and he says, it's time. I've heard the cry of my people. They don't want to be slaves any longer. I'm telling you that in the midst of the body of Christ, within the midst of the church, within the midst of the believers, there are people who are tired of being slaves slaves. They're tired of being slaves to their feelings, to their emotions, to their circumstances, to financial bondage. They're tired of this world. They're tired. They're tired and they want to do what's right. They want to live. They want to go on for God. They want to be free to love Jesus with all of their heart, all of their soul, all of their mind, all of their strength and all their being. But they just can't. They need a miracle. They need a divine intervention. I want you to know that God is about to bring about a divine intervention upon the human race as men have never seen. God is going to have a people that is holy, separated, sanctified, and set apart. He is going to do it by His Spirit. He is going to do it by the Holy Ghost. He is going to do it by the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb. He's going to do it by the new birth. He is going to take these people who want to love God. They want to serve God. They want to obey God. But every time they try and every time they move in that direction, it seems like they fall flat on their face. Why? Because the flesh profiteth nothing. We're going to look at this in much greater detail tonight and this morning if we get an opportunity. God, you said, yeah, but God's already sent Jesus. I understand that. But there is another movement. that I know that Brother Dave was telling me on Tuesday night he's going to be talking about the early late rain and the latter rain and what it means. And, he, and I'm going to let him share that. But there's about to be a mighty, a mighty earth shaking, pouring out of the Holy Ghost on this earth. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. And people who want God, people who want to love God, serve God, follow God, obey God, it says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But God is about to shake heaven and earth because he said this. He said, I will have a bride without spot or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. So in the midst of absolute 
terrible darkness where preachers have basically just given in and said we can never drive out the darkness. We can never live holy. We can never be right. We can never obey God. It doesn't really matter what we do. I'm telling you in the midst of this deception God is about to raise up not one or two but a thousand, ten thousand, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, I believe millions of people that will walk in the light, in the truth, in the power, in the revelation of Jesus Christ. How is he going to do this, Pastor Mike? He's going to do it suddenly. Just like on the day of Pentecost, when all of those disciples, according to those, of course, there had been rumors that Jesus had been raised from the dead, but the, 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 the inhabitants of Jerusalem and Israel, they just thought it was rumors. They just thought basically because a lie had been spread that his body had been taken away by the disciples, and it was just rumored that he was arise, well, raised from the dead. But on the day of Pentecost, they found out Jesus was alive. You know how they found out he was alive? Because he rose up within his people. And it started small. It started insignificant. What's 120 people if that's how many were up there? What is 120 people? But he rose up strong and mighty within those 120 men and women because all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came on him and they became empowered by the Holy Ghost and the fire of heaven was burning in them and now they rose up in powerful strength, in mighty faith. They were transformed and changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Have any of you ever been changed by the power power the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came upon them like a rushing mighty wind and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire and they all began to prophesy and speak in tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them inspiration and all of a sudden there was a large gathering see now the Holy Ghost is beginning to bring together and all of a sudden he began to preach under such an anointing such an unction such a power he began to preach in, in, in the boldness of the Holy Spirit it was no longer Peter the fisherman talking, but it was Jesus Christ speaking through him. And all of a sudden, they cried out. They cried out, what must we do to be saved? Hallelujah. And 3,000 not just got born again, but they got converted. 3,000 turned their lives over to God. 3,000 abandoned the silliness of this world and they went after Jesus. And then we see a couple of days later, there's 5,000 that come in. And all of a sudden, we see the Bible says, and great grace was upon them all. And with mighty signs and wonders gave the apostles evidence to the resurrection of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand cup and a shout. It's about to happen again. Whether you believe, whether you accept or not, in the days of Noah, no one believed there was going to be a flood, but there was a flood. When Moses first went before Pharaoh, nobody believed that in a natural, that, that, that he, he was going to bring deliverance to the children of Israel, but it happened. Nobody really believed that the vision and the dreams that Joseph had shared with his brothers and his sisters were ever going to take place, but it took place. I'm telling you, everything that God has prophesied about these last days... I know a lot of people have got it in their head that it's going to be just gloom and doom. I'm telling you it's going to be glorious. I'm telling you it's going to be awesome. I'm telling you it's going to be powerful. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost is about to come once again upon His church and He is about to transform us. Can you shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. It's about to happen, people. God is about to show up. He's about to mess up the devil's party. See, I, I don't know why so many people think that the devil is going to be ruling and reigning supreme, you know, in the very end. No, because he told Daniel when he had the vision with Nebuchadnezzar, he said there is a statue of gold, but the feet were going to be made of ten toes. That were going to be a mixture of iron and clay. And then the rock's going to come and roll over the top of them. And they're going to be smashed into the earth like they're nothing. I'm telling you, the most glorious days, the most powerful days, the most awesome days, the most amazing days we have ever seen is about to come upon the body of Christ. And it will not be about a building. It will not be about a denomination. It will not be about this group and that group. It will be us, the body of Christ, the bride of Jesus. 
all of this dysfunction, all of this disunity, all of this separation is about to disappear. God is about to send his fire. And how do you know that you can take a bunch of chunks of, 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 of impure metal and put them in a bucket, but when you stick them into the furnace and they begin to melt, they all become one. And the Bible says that we are one spirit with the Lord. There is one Lord, one faith, one body, one spirit. And we are all going to come together. And it's not going to be a unity of compromise. It's not going to be a unity, I'm okay, you're okay. It is going to be a unity of such pureness of the spirit. You say, how do you know this, Pastor Mike? I see it throughout the history of not only the old, but the new. And I see it also not only in the new, but I see it from that time to this. I'll give you an example. When the Spirit of God came upon King Saul, and he was out to kill King David. He was about to kill David, who was going to be king. All of a sudden, when the Spirit of God came upon him, even Saul began to prophesy. He was prophesying by the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the spirit of prophecy is not dead. It's about to come upon the body. And it says, you will prophesy. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams and young men will have visions. It is going to be a supernatural Holy Ghost. It is going to be outpouring of the spirit that we could never dream, hope, or imagine. Can you all shout amen? Amen. Now he says, he, the, the scripture says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets. I'm telling you, God spoke through my lips a couple years ago, I think it was, and he said this, In 40 days, God will purify his church. In 40 days, God will cleanse his body. In 40 days, like in the days of Noah, when it took the rain 40 days to wipe out all of the wickedness of the earth, God is about to do a work in his church. Whew. I'm telling you, it's about to happen. See, the grace of God will come upon us and God will begin to enable us and God will begin to empower us and God will begin to take us into a place to where we could never live or walk or move in our own being. He will quicken our mortal body. Now, if you look in the book of Genesis chapter 1, the very first thing that it declares that all of a sudden God showed up. So if you have your Bibles open there, please. Genesis chapter 1. I don't know how far we'll get this morning, but we'll pick it up tonight. If you're interested, I'm going to show you (laughs) by the Holy Ghost what's going on in the human race. I want to show you what's happening to people who even are the children of God. I want to show you what the devil did, but what God is about to do. Oh, we know the devil's busy. Stinking, dirty, rotten, no good, low belly, lying, evil demons, harassing people. See, Jesus said this. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life. What did the devil come to steal? You really think the devil cares about gold and silver? About money and position and power? Uh Uh-uh. He wanted the souls of men and women. Because the souls of men and women are the most valuable thing that God has created. And he wants our souls And he wants our minds. And he wants our eye gate, our mouth gate, our ear gate. He wants our heart. And he has taken captive the human race through the deception that he deceived the woman. And then the man partook. And he captured the human heart of man. And actually, it's a terrible thing, but the very DNA of the devil. You might say that in the natural, the soul of man was like that of an egg of a woman that was waiting to be fertilized. And because for some reason, Adam and his wife did not eat of the tree of life, but they ate from the tree of the knowledge, good and evil, that what was fertilized within that egg of their heart, their soul, and their mind, their will and emotions is the very demonic powers, the very demonic nature of the devil himself. And he said that in John chapter 8 verse 44 he said your father's the devil and the lust of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning what he was a murderer yeah he murdered listen he murdered a third of the angelic host he murdered them he took them out of life he took them out of liberty he took them out of such joy and such peace and such power Oh, we cannot imagine how the sons of God rejoiced, it says, in the beginning. But somehow, with his tongue, with his mouth, he was able to deceive or to convince these angelic beings that what they had was not good enough. And they they partook of his lie and they died. 
They who which were so sublime and beautiful and amazing and wonderful, who were to be those who would minister to us who are the heirs of salvation, they became devils, they became demons, they became murderers. He said, your father's the devil. He says he was a murderer and he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. And when he telleth a lie, he telleth it of his own. You see, my brothers and sisters, God has a wonderful plan for the human race. An amazing plan. Did you know the Bible says the human race will sit on the throne with him? <laughs> we will rule and reign with him. Then we will never be God, but we will be one with him. That we will know him as he knows us. Is there anything that God does not know about you? Nothing, my friend. And so the enemy was threatened. He says, not only that, but the Bible says, the psalmist said, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's something about the human soul that you look at a person on the outward and you think they're small and insignificant, but their soul is massive. It is another dimension. How can I prove that? Because when Jesus was speaking to the Gadarean who had devils and demons, he said, who are you? And they said, legion, which could mean up to 2,000 devils. And matter of fact, when he cast the devils out, they went into the pigs. And only one devil was allowed to go into one pig because the soul, and yes, animals have souls that return to the earth. But the soul of a pig could only hold one demon. And it says 2,000 pigs ran over the cliff. They'd rather die than have those devils in them. And yet the human soul is capable of holding so many demonic powers. Why? Because we were made to be the house of God. We were made to be the tabernacle of the king. God created us to dwell in and to walk in. He said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. See, that's what's going to happen when you leave this earth. In a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, you'll be changed. You'll stand before the presence of the Lord and you will be completely engulfed with God and you will think like He thinks. You will talk like He talks. You'll have the same heart, the same nature, the same character, the same personality. And not only that, but the Bible says that this corruption will put on incorruption and this mortality will put on immortality and you will have the same exact kind of body that Jesus Christ himself has. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. But God is going to do this. And so in Genesis chapter 1, all of a sudden God shows up. God shows up. Where, God, where have you been? You, 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 the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You, 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 you are forever. Where have you been? He said, I've been waiting. There's a time and there's a season. There's a time and this season. And we are coming into the season. He said, by the signs of the time, you'll be able to tell when I'm about to return. Let me tell you, before Christ returns, he will have a bride without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. It will not be brought about by just somebody preaching. It will not be brought about by good worship and praise. It will be not brought about by humanity, uh, 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 human efforts, or by helping people. It will be brought about by the Holy Ghost. It will be brought about by the Spirit of the living God. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead will begin to charge us from the inside out. He will begin to transform us and change us and will begin to break loose from the cocoon that has held us captive and no more will we be worms but we will be wonderful amazing butterflies praise the Lord <laughs> now I think I, I really believe that that caterpillar has no idea that worm has no idea what it's going to be until it becomes it I'm telling you you really don't comprehend at this moment what you are going to be. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for them that love them. But God has revealed it to some by His Spirit. Yeah. So God said, He showed up. God said, look what it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God, say the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Darkness covered the earth. Darkness, absolute void. Couldn't see anything. It was dark. I don't think the earth had much beauty at that time. Matter of fact, one translation in the Hebrew says it was chaotic. It was a mess. 
But all, I believe that was symbolic of the human whole soul. But all of a sudden, the Spirit of God was hovering. And that word in the Hebrew means like a mother hen sitting on an egg. <laughs> Something's about ready to hatch in you. Something's about to come forth. It's called the divine nature. It's called Jesus Christ. You say, I, 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 just, I, just, I just don't know. That's because you're in the darkness of your egg. But it's okay because the day will come when all of a sudden the body, the church, the bride, the beloved will pop forth and all the world will see the glory of God within his church. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Now, he always, has, he always has those who go in advance. He always has an Elijah and Elijah. He always has a John the Baptist. He always has someone like that. But we are about to come into an amazing move of God to where when it happens, you'll have to keep rubbing your eyes. you go, really? I'm telling you, the day will come when you get up and you feel different and you're thinking different, and you're talking different, and you'll go and look in the mirror and you'll go, what? Whoa, talking about beauty sleep. What in the world happened? What did I do to cause this to happen? What did I do to bring this change? Now there's some of us that have to have violent faith because God always has to have a tip on the end of the nail, but the rest of the nail follows through. But God is about to break forth. And that, that longing and that hunger and that thirst you have to live right, to do right, to think right, to speak right, to act right will come upon you all of a sudden because your heart has cried out to God, Oh God, oh God, I want to do your will. Oh God, I want to be like Jesus. Oh God, I want to put you first. Oh God, I want to go all the way. But for some demonic reason, you can't. And I'll tell you why. Because many people are still being held captive by the devil. But God's about to bust the chains. Yes. Yes. He's about to bust the chops of the enemy. He's about to come in like a rushing mighty wind. He's about to rise up in his fury, in his fire, in his almightiness. And he's about to say, even as what Moses declared, let my people go. Hallelujah. And you don't even know it yet. Those people in Egypt, those slaves... They really, in the beginning, they thought, oh, maybe Moses can help us. But as time went on, plague after plague after plague, they got so discouraged and they just said, basically, Moses, just shut up. It's getting worse. Nothing's getting better. We're even having to make bricks now without straw. We're going to have to gather the straw. And, 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 and Moses, just be quiet. But Moses didn't shut up and Mike Yeager's not going to shut up. And there's other men of God and there's other women of God. They're not going to shut up because they're declaring, you've got to let my people go. You've got to let little Susie go. You've got to let little Freddie go. You've got to let John go. You've got to let, you've got to let him go. I, I read an amazing story because what we're talking about is being full of the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about a little dab of do you. I'm talking about being full of the Holy Ghost. I don't know if I've ever met anybody who is really full of the Holy Ghost. Fall, permeated, overflowing. For he said, out of your belly will fall reverse, reverse of living water. Not a little trickle, not a little drop, not a little stream. He said, out of your belly. What is that? He said in John chapter 6, verse 38, he says he was speaking about the Holy Ghost who had not yet been given. But on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost showed up. And nothing was ever the same in the life of Peter and Paul and James and John and the mother of Jesus, Mary. Nothing was ever the same in the earth from that day forward. And it went on, they say, for 350 years until the enemy finally persuaded and convinced and he began to deceive the believers into thinking that you can't live in victory. You can't overcome Oh, you, that healing's passed away. But I'm so glad Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it once, he'll do it again. If he ever opened the eyes of the blind, he'll do it again. If he ever raised the dead, he'll do it again. If he opened the ears of the deaf, he'll do it again. If he raised the dead, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. And he said, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do. He said, cast out devils, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. He said, cast out devils, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. Now, Smith Wigglesworth was a predecessor of this. See, he realized there was demonic powers that holding people in bondage, but he was full of the Holy Ghost. 
Let me tell you something, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, no sickness, no disease, no devil, no demon can stand against you. It's not you, it's the Spirit of God in you. We are nothing but vessels. And Smith Wigglesworth told a story that he went on board a, a boat. I don't know where he was headed, maybe to America. I don't know where he was headed, but he went into the cabin and there was a man who was drinking alcohol. And he looked over at, the man looked over and began to talk to him and began to tell him, I, I'm in bondage. He said, I've inherited great wealth, but basically I'll be a dead man. What good is that wealth to me? And Smith Wigglesworth says to him, man, do you want to be free? It just went right over the top of his head. He said, man, do you want to be free? And it went right over the top of his head. And you know what Smith did then? He walked over to the man and he took his hand and he slapped on his forehead. And he simply said this, you foul devil of alcohol, come out of him now in Jesus' name. Instantly, the man began to weep and cry and wail. The man gave his heart to Jesus. The man grabbed the alcohol, bottles of alcohol and he dumped them out. And the man sat at the feet of Smith Wigglesworth until they finished that cruise. By the power of the Holy Spirit, that demonic spirit of alcoholism that had control of that man was cast out. He said, you will cast out devils. He said, you will heal the sick. You will cleanse the lepers. So, the Holy Spirit's hovering over the face of the deep. And now notice what it says here down here in verse, 27, in verse 26. And God said, let us, say let us. That's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us make man in that image after our likeness. And let them, let them, let man, let man have dominion. Oh, the angelic beings heard this. Let man, now God had cast the devil in his, I don't know when he cast him to the earth, but he let him run loose because God had a purpose. See, God has a purpose in all of this. We may not understand. I'm not saying I comprehend everything. But I, I, I tell you what, I have enough faith in God to know he knows what he's doing. I really do. Now, I'm not going to blame something on God that is, 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 is the devil. He's the father of lights in whom there's no verb and it's not a shadow of turning. And God isn't going around murdering innocent people. God's not going around putting cancer on people. God's not putting, now maybe they opened the door, but you know what? Who doesn't open the door? So notice what it goes on to say here. After our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. And notice, over every creeping thing. Say, the devil's a creep. And Adam had authority over him. But he didn't exercise it. Say, let, let's be honest. A lot of bad things happen in our life because we don't take authority. No, really. I tell you, the minute you begin to get a sore throat, the minute you begin to get bitter, the minute you begin to get discouraged, you know what you ought to do? You ought to take authority over it. You ought to take, you ought to, in the name of Jesus, you foul devil, you're not discouraging me. You foul devil, I'll not yield my mind to that desire. I'll not go over there. See, the minute that David saw Bathsheba on the roof, he should have taken authority over his mind and said, no, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I'm not going there, praise the Lord. If you learn to begin to take authority, I'm talking about even before we have a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'll tell you what, when the Holy Ghost comes, when we are going to have a mighty, and you say, but Pastor Mike, the Holy Ghost has already come. No, no, I don't understand all this. He said, I am going to pour out my spirit. There is going to be an early rain and a latter rain. Well, that happened on the day of Pentecost, not according to the, 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 the brother of Jesus, James. He said, the Lord of the harvest is patient until he receive the early and the latter rain. We got seven billion people on the earth. Over. You know what God is about to do? He's take a people set aside for him. He is about, he's just going to take right away from the devil. He said that when the strong man is not bound up, he can do what he wants. But once you bind up that strong man, he's got to let him go. And I'm telling you right now, there are many scriptures in the Old Covenant. You look them up. Look up the word prison or prisoner. And he's prophesying. God is speaking by the prophets of old that the human race was taken captive by the devil. He's got a hold of their mind. He's got a hold of their emotions. He's got a hold of their eyes. He's got a hold of their heart. He's got a hold of their lives. And he's having them wasted on all kinds of foolish, vain amusements that aren't going to profit them nothing. They're slaves. The Bible says, he that committed sin is a slave to sin. 
But it says, He that committed sin is of the devil for this purpose. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. The devil! What was the works? A spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. He said, I'm going to pulverize it. I'm going to step on it like a man would take his foot and grind the head of a copperhead into the ground. Oh yeah, I'll get poisoned, he said. I'll die, but I'll rise again. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, God, I've seen, I've seen a move of the Spirit like this. Just spasmodically here and there where I, I, I would lay my hands on a person who was so filled with drugs and alcohol, they were lying down, dying, and God ripped it right out of them. Like as if it never was there. God is able. Say, God is able. God is more than able. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church. God is about to raise up some Stephens full of the Holy Ghost and faith. God is about to raise up some Pauls full of the Holy Ghost and faith. God is about to raise up some Barnabases. It says he was full of the Holy Ghost and faith. I want to be one of them. I want to be in the front line. I want to be right there. Pastor Mike, what if you're a Stephen and they can't handle the Holy Ghost in you and they kill you? I'll see you on the other side. Praise the Lord. God's about ready to deliver his body from worldly pleasures and worldly cares and the things of this life. He's about to deliver you. See, I, my salvation was so supernatural. It was the grace of God and the Spirit of God that fell on me and he instantly set me free from three and a half packs of cigarettes a day and cigars and the alcohol, the Southern Comfort and the vodka. I took all my drugs. I flushed them down the toilet. I took all my rock music and I, I broke it. I, or I gave it away. I don't know what I did with it, but I was free. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Woo! But you can lose that freedom. The Bible says stand fast in the liberty. Where, see, I'm not even speaking from my notes. I'm just speaking by the Holy Ghost. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not again entangled in the yoke of bondage. That's in the book of Galatians where it talks about the works of the flesh. The church has been enslaved by the devil. But it's okay because I hear the voice of God speaking from heaven like a mighty thundering voice saying, let my people go! Hallelujah. Let them go! And with a mighty right hand, he's about to do it. <laughs> you and I have no concept. We have no inkling. We have no idea how awesome and how powerful and how majestic and how mighty this last outpouring is going to be. It's going to take a mighty work of God to set you free from anything and everything that is of the world, the flesh, and the devil, the cares of life, the deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things. It's going to take a mighty move of God to change your nature to where you become like Jesus overnight. Overnight. It happened in the book of Acts chapter 4. It says, And great grace was upon them all. God's about to do it. Say, God's about to do it. Can you lift your hands and thank Him for it? Oh, thank you, Lord. You say, oh, when, 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 when is it about to happen, Pastor? I don't know, but it's very soon. It's any time now. It's any moment. It's any second. It could be right now. Where the power of God and the fire of heaven and the moving of the Spirit sweeps you off your feet and touches your hard heart and melts it like wax. And he begins to mold and shape his divine image in you. And all of a sudden there is no longer any anger, no bitterness, no fear, no worry, no anxiety, no desire for this world, no care for the materialistical things of this life. All you want to do is go after Jesus. All you want to do is worship him. The spirit of God can come upon you. The spirit of praise. And all of a sudden we'll have services where we will be praising for days on end and we'll feel like we have not even begun. Really, Pastor? Oh, yeah. I tell you, when the spirit of prayer came on me one morning, I got up. My wife and I were pastoring in Three Springs Assembly. God, I just had an urging in my spirit to jump up and pray. When the spirit of God begins to unction you to get up and pray, you need to do it. I got up and I began to cry out to God for souls. I began to pray in tongues. I began to weep. And, and I got, finally got done. And I, I literally thought an hour had gone by. 
but it had been seven to eight hours. The next morning, the Holy Spirit rolled me out of bed, and it happened again. I didn't even know it, seven, eight hours. It happened anywhere from seven to eight days in a row. I didn't keep a track. I didn't know that's what he was going to do. I didn't say, okay, now the Holy Ghost is going to move on me, and I need to keep a diary of it. No, the Holy Ghost. Have you ever been taken away by the power of the Spirit? Have you ever been touched by the power of Almighty God and you knew it was not you preaching? You knew it was not you singing? You knew it was not you walking? You knew it was God in you doing the works? It's God doing the works. And so all of a sudden he said, let us make man like in our image after our likeness. And then it tells us in chapter 2, in verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into him the nostrils, into the nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I believe that was a threefold creation. What do I mean by that? Spirit, soul, mind, and body. But I also believe it was a threefold impartation. I'm convinced that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost came into that man. But it could not be confirmed and sealed until they partook of the tree of life because he was not going to take away our power of choice. Even though you're born again, even though you've given your heart to Jesus or you've made a confession, he'll not take away your power of choice. But there is a place in the Holy Ghost where you are so swept up in the moving of the Spirit, you just can't help yourself. Have you ever experienced where you just couldn't help but getting upset? You couldn't help worrying? You couldn't help? You know what? I've been at times in my life, I couldn't just help but praising Him. I couldn't help but rejoicing in Him. I couldn't help but praying. I couldn't help but fasting. I couldn't help but studying. I couldn't help it. There was a hunger in me. There was a thirst in me. There was a longing in me that no devil could stop. I'm telling you that spirit is about to come upon the body of Christ once again and you can be a part of it if you want to wave your hand. Say, Lord, let me be a part of that move. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you all the sick will be healed. Even the sinners who don't want God. All the blind will see. All the deaf will hear. That's why we'll be a threat. We'll be a threat to the modern technology. We'll be a threat to the modern world because they'll say, hey, with these believers around, they don't need us. They, they don't need us. They, 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 they just go there and they get whatever they need. And we're losing a lot of money out of this deal. Hello? Right. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I don't know how many times we've seen people who could have spent a lot of money. I, I, I know Sister Sandra, she had uh, cancer of the thyroid. And God took it out of her. Praise the Lord. <laughs> saved, uh, saved a lot of money and a lot of heartache and a lot of pain and probably would have killed her. I'm telling you, man, God is more than able and God wants to. But his eyes are roaming to and fro upon the face of the whole earth to show himself strong and on behalf of them whose hearts are in agreement with him. Oh, yes, Lord, here am I. Here am I. I'll be your servant. I'll be the one. I'll surrender. I will die. I will go all the way. I will let go of the things of this world. It's your grace that work in me. I will be who you made me to be and I will be full of the Holy Ghost and I will be full of faith and I will be full of love and I'll be full of the divine nature. Praise the Lord. Lord. I will be. Anybody else, come and join me. Now you don't join me now, that's okay. You'll have to join us later. You can either join now or you can join later. I'm in it right now. I'm in it by the Holy Spirit. Man, can you tell? I'm in it, man. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm going all the way by the grace of God, by the mercy of God. I don't think I stand because if a man thinks he stand, let him take heed lest he fall. My hope and confidence is not in this flesh. This twisted, perverted, vile flesh. The Bible says in the, in the book of, of Philippians, he said he will take this vile flesh by his power and he's able to subdue it and transform it into like his body. Isn't that wonderful? But I don't have to wait till I get to heaven. I'm not saying I'm going to get a glorified body in this earth, but this body doesn't have to control me. Praise the Lord. So he breathed into man the breath of life. The Father, the Son, and I'm telling you what, the Holy Ghost came into Adam. When the Holy Ghost came into that body, it stood up and it became a living soul with a personality. Dirt, mud, earth became alive and I am convinced yes it was still in a mud vessel but you didn't see the mud I am convinced you saw the glory of God I am convinced 
that you and I take a look, Stephen, when he was full of the Holy Ghost as they were stoning him, the Bible says his face shined like that of an angel. What does that mean, like an angel? It doesn't mean he just had a cute, good-looking look on his face. It means he glowed with a bright white light. I am convinced that you and I can get to the place in the Holy Ghost where we begin to glow. We begin to shine. And he says, let your light shine before men that they may know. What? His light, His glory, His Shekinah. The Shekinah of glory was on Adam and his wife. But the devil came along in chapter 3 and the devil lied to the woman and deceived her in verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman believed her. He was deceived. She was deceived. She partook. She gave to her husband. And look what happened in verse 7. And, I, and it says here, And he did eat and gave also on her husband with her. And he did eat, verse 7, And the eyes of them both were opened. Why? They went blind. They went blind to the realm of the Spirit. God is a Spirit. And they that worship Him must be worshiping Him in spirit and truth. Now, if God created us in his likeness, in his image, in his form, God is the Spirit. See, Adam and his wife, they saw into the Spirit. That's all they saw. I'm convinced of it. You know what? When you're in the Spirit, you see all kinds of things. I know here last fall there was a sister, a pastor sitting over here on my right-hand side. I looked at her, and in the Spirit I saw a growth in her left lung. I saw it. I saw it. And I caught her out. And she had brought... The, 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 the cat scan with her to tell me I've got a growth in my left lung but it was the spirit of God and I said come up here and I told it to come out it wasn't me it's not you that heals the sick it's not my anointing it's Jesus this man is made whole in the name of Jesus by the power of Jesus see that's how the see a lot of people don't really understand how the Holy Ghost moves how the Holy Ghost functions how the Holy Ghost operates See, you understand, the Holy Ghost is looking for a vessel that's clean and pure and submitted and yielded. That's why it says in a great house, there are vessels of gold and of silver and of wood and of earth, and some to dishonor and some to dishonor. Now you say, well, I'm just nothing but a mud vessel. He said, but if a man will purge himself. Of these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, meet for the master's use. Listen, prepared unto every good work. That means God can use you anywhere, anytime, in any situation. One day, my wife and I and my kids walked into Lowe's. And all of a sudden, there was a big commotion up at the front counter. And the young lady went into an epileptic seizure. Oh, the Holy Ghost rised up in me and said, you, you don't have to let that happen. And I went over there and I said, excuse me, excuse me, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor. And sure I am, I got a PhD in Doctor of Divinity. I didn't tell them what kind of doctor. So they moved on my way and I leaned over. And she's down there thrashing and kicking away her eyes in her head. And I laid my hands on her very gently. You don't have to yell at the devil. You've got authority. And I whispered, I said, you foul devil, you loose her now. I'm telling you, I am not lying. Her eyes straightened up. Her body stopped going into convulsions. And she was completely normal. And she stood to her feet. Give the Lord a hand clap. All the good preaching in the world ain't going to do that. All the singing in the world ain't going to do that. When you got somebody who ain't moving in the Holy Ghost, he'll go on for hours trying to cast the devil out. You might as well shut up and get back in your prayer closet. Go get the job done. What? Get full of the Holy Ghost. Did you know that he commanded his disciples? He said, now I know you guys have been with me for three and a half years, and I've taught you all I've known, and your head is full of all kinds of wonderful knowledge and information, and, and, and you're born again because it says in John, I think, 22, he breathed on them and said, receive, receive the this, this Spirit. That was the new birth. They got born again right then there. But he told them this. He commanded them. This is where us preachers have really missed it. He said, I command you. You go to Jerusalem and you stay there until you're endued with power from on high. The promise of my father. He will endue you with the fire and with the power. And they did it. They did it. They could have been busy doing all kinds of other stuff, man. They said, oh, we got to get this message out. We got to go. And the church for thousand, uh, uh, over a thousand years, most of the church has been operating in the ability of the flesh with a sincere heart. But how many people are getting set free? How many people are being delivered? 
How many people are being taken away from the devil? How many people can finally see? So their eyes were open and they noticed they were naked. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost had lifted off them. The Shekinah glory was on them. They couldn't see their flesh. But now the Holy Ghost has departed. Ichabod, the Spirit has left. See, you and I, we were created to be full of the Holy Ghost. To be filled with the power of the Spirit. You might say at that moment that the soul of man was impregnated with an evil spirit. The devil got into the heart of man and before you know it, Cain is killing Abel. And then all of a sudden the world gets so bad he's got to destroy it. So he's been taken captive. Man was taken captive by the devil. He came and took man captive by the devil. So how are we going to set man free? How are we going to get him loose from the... Well, first of all, Jesus had to come. He told us in, in chapter 3, he said, this, the, the, the seed of the woman is going to crush your head. Praise God, he did. He crushed the head of the devil. He overcame principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. But did you know he translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God's beloved son? But did you notice that happened before the day of Pentecost? And yet Peter and James and John, they were born again. Yes, they had a love for God, but they had no power. They still couldn't cause people. Do you know Jesus, he was God in the flesh, wasn't he? Now think about this. He walked and lived among the human race for 30 years. He never tried to help anybody as far as we know. Now, I don't know. I'm talking about trying to get people free from demons or sickness or anything like that. He never did it, did he? Why didn't Jesus? Now, listen. He was the Word in the flesh. He was holiness. He was obedience. He was compassion. Why didn't Jesus set anybody free? Because he was not going to do it in his deity. He was going to do it by the same way you and I have to. He was going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And John the Baptist said this. He said, I baptize you in water, but there's one who's coming whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose, and he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. It's a divine, invisible fire that drives out the darkness, drives out the disease, drives out the infirmity. I've seen God do it so many times when there's a little flow of the Holy Ghost. You know, you can have a little flow of the Holy Ghost, but we need to be full of the Holy Ghost. You don't need a little dab, do you? Yeah, how, how many of you have ever experienced the move of God in your heart and the Holy Ghost took a hold of you? Wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that wonderful? Can you not, Smith Wigglesworth says, you can accomplish more one day in the Holy Ghost than if you lived a thousand lifetimes. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. So Jesus, what did Jesus do? He waited till the Father said, it's time. It's time, it's time. Now, John the Baptist, here's what's interesting. John the Baptist had, and we can talk about why. See, I, I, I believe that the prophets of old were given violent faith. God gave them violent faith. He gives gifts as he wills. I know when I got born again, he gave me violent faith. I know he did. I don't think it, I don't, maybe it, I don't question it. I know it's not because of who I am. Matter of fact, it is because he uses the foolish to confound the wise. And I know that for 40 years, God, and I am nobody special, and admit you think you're somebody special, you are gone. You've been taken captive by the devil. No, no, it's all Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that Jesus heard the voice of the Father. He said, it's your day, son. Okay, Father. He goes down to the River Jordan. And John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. And he walks up to John. And John, he said, I'm not even worthy to untie your shoes. And Jesus says to John, John, baptize me in water. He says, Lord, who am I to baptize you? He knew he was sinless and holy. He knew he was a lamb without blemish or spot. He says, you must do it to fulfill the word of God. And he baptized them. Now listen, when he baptized them in water, which is symbolic of death to self, he came up out of the water. You know, I have had services in the past where we water baptized people and they came up speaking in tongues. Isn't that wonderful? 
came up speaking in tongues. Didn't even know there was, but their heart was sincere and real with God. They truly had repented from the depths of their being. See, the Holy Ghost is looking. He's looking for a place to move. He's looking for a heart that wants to be filled. He's looking for someone who says, Lord, I just want people to be delivered and healed and set free. I'm not looking for a big name. I'm not looking for popularity. I'm not looking to be famous. I'm not looking to build up, fill, fill up this building. I just want people to be free from the stick and lying, no good, yellow belly, slimy, dirty, low, no good, filthy, rotten devil. See, I'm telling you right now, man, if you don't hate the devil, it's going to be hard for you to cast him out. You got to hate the devil, man. You got to hate arthritis. You got to hate cancer. You got to hate disease. You got to hate sin. But it's the Holy Ghost that would do it within. And so he comes up and here he is, he's up, and the Holy Ghost comes on him for him like a dove. And he was still full of the power. No, no, the Holy Ghost has come. But now the Spirit of God's got to lead him. See, this is how you're going to get full of the Holy Ghost. You're not just going to come up out of the water full of power. God's going to say, okay, now let's see. Let's see if you can listen to me. Let's see if you can obey me. Let me see if you can follow me where I lead. Even if it takes you away from your family, takes you away from your job, takes you away from your hobbies, takes you away from everything that this world embraces and everybody says is normal. Let me see if you'll do it. And he left behind his mother and his brothers and his sisters and they were quite upset because he was the eldest because Joseph had died. And so he goes out. He doesn't tell a soul where he's going. He goes into the wilderness for 40 days. He's tempted and tried of demons. He comes to the end of the 40 days and he was hungry. And the devil came. And the devil says to him, if you be the son of God, turn that rock into to bread. But Jesus, see, use the anointing. Use the power of the spirit to get what you want. He said, do it. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now, this is very important. If we're going to be people full of the Holy Ghost, see, somebody's, see, don't, don't listen to me. I'm not saying everybody's going to go through this test, this trial, this, this, this experience. Because God has apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. What? For the perfecting of the saints. For in other words, God has the, he gave when he ascended up on high. To what? To set people free in the name of Jesus. So, let him into the wilderness for 40 days. Turn that rock into bread. It is written. Takes him up to a high pinnacle and shows him all the wealth of this world. And he says to him, I'll give this off. You'll bow down and worship me. And Jesus says, it is written. You know, no, nah, you can't buy me. I'm not for sale. That wealth, that power, that position, that fame, I don't care about it. My heart belongs to the Father. You ain't going to steal me from the Father. You see what the devil is trying to do? He's trying to steal us from God. That's why it says in the last days, the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. He's stealing the heart of the bride away from the groom. And it looks like he's done a good job. Uh-uh. His days are numbered. He's about to show up. He's about to come exploding on the pages of history. And they're not going to know what to do when he shows up. They're not going to be able to handle this great I am. They're not going to be able to handle this consuming fire. Oh, he's going to get in his people. He's going to get on his people. He's going to get all over his people. And they're all going to start to prophesy. And they're all going to start heading out into the highways and the byways. And they're going to start casting out devils and healing the sick and raising the dead and cleansing the lepers. They'll try to pass laws that you can't pray for people anymore, but it ain't going to stop us. They'll say, you can't preach in this name no more. And we're going to say, you go ahead, you do what you want, but we're going to obey God. Yeah. And then he said to him, if you be the son of God, throw yourself down from this. And God said, I will uphold you. And you, you won't even dash your foot against the rock. But Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So what happens sometimes when the Holy Ghost comes on us, we think we can do anything we want and nothing is going to harm us. Any, no, no, I'm not going to tempt God. And then the Holy Ghost, listen, 
we'll close here. It says, And Jesus came out in the power of the Spirit. And from that moment forward, he began to heal the multitudes. It was like nothing. Just healing him left and right. Peter's mother was sick. He said to her, rise up, and she was healed. And at their door was a multitude of demon-possessed people and sick people and blind people and hurting people, and everyone that he touched was made whole. Didn't even speak to him. He just touched them, and the power of the Holy Ghost would flood them. <laughs> Why do you? See, the Holy Ghost is a tangible force. He is a person, but he was in prayer cloth. And when Paul laid his hands on the prayer cloth, wherever that power of the Spirit, there is a power, there is an invisible force, there is a dynamic energy, there is, there is, there is a life-giving Spirit. He's called the Holy Ghost. And when he comes into contact with anything that is against the will of God out of a heart that is sold out to him, lock, stock, and barrel, the devils have got to leave. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Come on. Ready or not, it's coming. It's coming. I, 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 I've heard, I've seen the tsunami of the Spirit for years. I've heard the feet of God's army in Ezekiel 37 where they're just nothing but dead, dry, scattered bones. And as the prophet begins to prophesy to the wind, the north, the south, the east, and the west, and it comes running, and it comes flowing, and all of a sudden this dead army called the body, the church, the, the church of the living God, is going to rise up on its feet as a mighty army. Let's put some worship music on, guys. Anybody in there? Put some worship music on, will you, Joseph? I'll tell you right now, God is calling some of you to really begin to pursue him right now. Don't wait. Don't wait for it to happen. Don't wait. I, I, I know the Holy Ghost is. How I many know the Holy Ghost is here this morning? I know the Holy Ghost is all over me, but I'm not yet full. <laughs> I mean, if, my, if I was a physical cup and you could see how much Holy Ghost I have in me, it might be up to my ankle. <laughs> but the Bible says it's going to be like a fire hydrant that somebody hit with a car that lost control and they can't stop it. It's about to pour out, man. Now, when it begins to pour out, when God begins to show up, I, I told my wife the other day as I've been crying out and seeking God, I'm telling you honestly, seeking God with all my heart. He spoke to me as I was coming back from Indiana. He said, it's time, it's time, it's now, it's now, it's now, it's now, the time I prepared you for. He said, it's coming. You better get ready. Remember Elijah said, after it had not rained for three and a half years on the earth, he sent his servant, Gay, uh, I don't know if it was Gay Hayes, uh, up on the top. And he said, go up there and take a look what's happening. And a man ran up there and he came down said, nothing, nothing's happening. He said, go back up, went up the second time, up the mountain. Come on, man, flaky prophet, goofy prophet. Pastor Mike, you're just a flake. You've been telling us for years the Holy Ghost is about to pour out. Go up another time and take a look, he told him. Went up, nothing there. Went up the fourth time, nothing there. Went up the fifth time, nothing there. I bet that servant was really getting aggravated now. If he would have been a parishioner, he would have left his church a long time ago. Went up the sixth time, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Do you hear me? I'm, I'm sure he's boiling as he's climbing up the sixth time to the top of that mountain. And he, nothing, there's nothing. What's wrong with this crazy old coot? comes down, and I'm sure if you could have heard him talking to Elijah, there would have been a little bit of anger in his voice, a little bit of disgust. He probably said, man, I, 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 I can't tell him what I'm really wanting to tell him because I've seen him call fire down from heaven. <laughs> I know he can call fire, but there ain't no rain. He gets down there and says, go up one more time. He didn't say one more time. He just said, go. He went up there, and he looks, and he looks. He sees a little cloud. A little cloud. That prophet knew the voice of God. A little cloud. Looked insignificant, just a little puff of smoke on the horizon. He came down and he said, Yeah, there's a little cloud. He said, Because the king's man was there. 
He said, you better tell the king to hurry up. He said, because the rain is coming. <laughs> he said, you better flee because it's going to be a flood. And the Bible says, it came like a mighty outpour out of nowhere. It does the same storm clouds began to roll in. It just says, boom, there was a mighty rain. And it says, the Spirit of God came upon Elijah. And he outran the horses and the chariots and he met him back at the castle. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been climbing that mountain for almost 40 years. I've been climbing it and climbing it and climbing it. I figured I'd preached in the front of this sanctuary probably 10,000 times. Probably over 10,000 times I've written over 7,000 sermons. I had preached when these chairs had nobody but my kids to listen to. And I just keep climbing the mountain. I said, Lord, I know. I know there's a cloud. I know there's a rain. I know there's an outpouring. God, I know. I know. I'll not stop, Lord. I'll not give up. No matter how many criticize or find fault or don't understand me, it's between you and me, God. I'll... And I've climbed the mountain. And I've seen the cloud. And it's about to pour. If you had asked any of the inhabitants of the land of Israel and around the world, it hadn't been raining for three and a half years. That's what it says. Not a drop of rain. They all would have said, Do you think it's going to rain today? They looked up in the brash heavens and, No. I don't think it's ever going to rain again. But God showed a prophet. He said, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets, his servants. I'm telling you, I see the cloud of rain. I see the cloud. <laughs> I see the cloud. Amy, you got faith. I said, Amy, it don't matter if you do or not. I see the cloud. I see the cloud. The land of Israel is nothing but death. That's all it was, was death. Just desert now, three and a half years, no rain, no life. I see a cloud. Perversion, immorality, abortion, communism, murdering of Christians, pushing of perverted lifestyles. I see a cloud. I see a cloud. Go ahead, point up into the heavens, say, I see a cloud. I see it. Say, I see a cloud. I see it, it's coming. I see it, it's coming, it's coming. And if you got faith, and if you got faith, can you see it? Pam Flickinger, can you see the cloud? Pam Prick, can you see the cloud? Brother Bill, can you see the cloud? Dave, can you see the cloud? Can you see it? Can you see it, Michael? Can you see it, Jeremy? Can you see it, Sandra? Can you see the cloud? I see the cloud. And it's about to rain. <laughs> It's about to rain. On this dry and thirsty land where there is no water, no move of God, hardly it to speak of. It's about to rain. Y'all want to dance in the rain with me? You want to sing in the rain? Go ahead and stand to your feet and start dancing in the rain a little bit by faith. Go ahead. If you got faith, if you got faith, dance a little bit with me in the rain. <laughs> I mean it, man. You're dancing in the rain. Say, you're nuts. That's all right. They thought Elijah was nuts too. I'm dancing in the rain. Can you sense the rain coming as you're dancing? It's coming on you, ain't it? It's coming on you. God is looking for people who will believe. Will you believe with me? And by the way, I, I changed this a little bit. Uh, so for, you know... They're not recording anymore, right? You are, okay, well that's fine, that's okay. Let me say this then. I've seen God come with little waves of the Spirit. You know what I'm talking about? He does that encourage you. And, and when it really looked like, and I shared this last week, when it looked like the church was gone, every mold's growing everywhere. The Lord encouraged me by getting on my kids. 
and they had been here all their life. The only one that wasn't born since I've been pastoring here was Michael. He was just a couple years old. Came here in 83, and I saw mold. There was mold growing everywhere. And I saw my kids rise up with bottles of bleach and begin to bleach from top to bottom, every one of these walls, all the hallways, and all the classrooms. None of us got sick. And I saw the Spirit of God take them and begin to build these fireplaces and begin to... And then God sent Sister Nancy and she kept saying this. I've got to get this place done. I've got to get it ready because there's a move of God coming. She was this young baby Christian. We led her to the Lord and to the baptism. She'll be back. Because she began to really prepare the place, began to paint when nobody else would paint, when nobody else would help. She's painting. She's painting. She's not just sitting. She's doing something. And then the Spirit of God moved on being a spring, and she had been wanting, we'd been, we'd been totally, completely, the sanctuary was still this ugly gray, death. And the Spirit of God rose up in me and said, it's time to paint. Some of you were here and you saw it. I began to paint from morning to night, and some of you joined in with me. And then when I went out there, I kept on seeing gold, gold on the walls, symbolic. And I said to Brother Joseph, Joseph, will you paint? I don't know, four inches, four inches of gold. And he did it because we had two cans of gold paint from the government, praise the Lord. And I kept on seeing a gold stripe up here. I said to myself, I know this might sound insignificant, but it's the leading of the Spirit. I said, Lord, they must have gold tape somewhere. We got to stand on the gold. The temple, the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, and I went to Walmart the other day and they had a big box of multiple colors of duct tape. I didn't see no gold, but I wanted some gold duct tape. So I began to push my way through it. And lo and behold, I found gold duct tape, one roll. And, I, and it came to me, you need five rolls of this because gold duct tape, it only has 10 yards. And it came to my mind, you need five rolls to do it. <laughs> to do what needs to be done. And so I got the pushing and I found another one. And then I found another one. And then there was two boxes and I could only find number four. And I said, I know there's another one in there somewhere. I'm not letting go. So I had to go through the whole kit and caboodle. And there it was hiding underneath. And I pulled it up. And I said, oh God, you told me five rolls. I didn't measure it. And it exactly did it until I ran out. Now, if you don't respond, I'm not judging your heart. Don't come up here because I'm giving this altar call. 